Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction into how to make scientific measurements. So, of course, in science, we perform different types of experiments. And when you perform experiments, well, you collect data, and that data is then recorded somewhere. So, for example, maybe you go in a lab, you do an experiment, and you write down 52.8 as your data or your measurement. Well, what's wrong with this measurement? Well, 52.8 watt, right? We need some kind of a unit. So if you were to say 52.8 kilometers or 52.8 degrees Fahrenheit or um, hours or minutes, that would make a lot more sense. So whenever you record a measurement in science, you always have to record both the number and a unit. Now, there are actually two different types of numbers that we work with in science. The first type are known as exact numbers. And exact numbers are those that have been defined to be true or those that you can obtain through counting. So there's no kind of ambiguity. There's no guessing. There's no estimating. There's no approximating. For example, one dozen has been defined to be exactly 12. It's not around 12. It is exactly 12. Again, it's been defined to be true. One week is exactly seven days. One dollar is exactly 100 pennies. One kilometer is exactly a thousand meters. Again, these are all things that have been defined, and I'm sure you can think of lots of others. Like for example, one hour is exactly 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. One foot is exactly 12 inches. Again, these have all been defined, so they're exact. There's no estimating, there's no approximating. Now exact numbers can also be numbers that you obtain through counting. So you physically count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know there are exactly seven quarters. So we're not guessing, we're, we're actually defining how many quarters there are. By contrast, measurements are always inexact. Again, when you're measuring something, it's not been defined, you're trying to determine what the value is. And again, the reason it's inexact is there's some kind of approximating, there's some kind of estimating. So for example, maybe you measure the temperature of something and it's 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you measure your weight on the bathroom scale and it comes up 178 pounds. Or you measure the length of a race and it's 100.0 meters. These have all been measured, so these are called inexact numbers. We're not saying that person is exactly 178 pounds, but they're approximately 178 pounds. Now, when it comes to evaluating measurements, we can evaluate them according to two different criteria. The first one is known as the accuracy of the measurement, and that's how close the measurement is to the target, to the accepted value. And the other one is the precision of that measurement, and that's how close a series of measurements are to one another. So, for example, if you're taking three or four or five measurements, how close are all those measurements to one another? So another way to think about this is accurate, or accuracy, is how correct your answer is. How close to the true value is it? And precision, or being precise, is how consistent you are. So let me give you a couple of examples just to help illustrate this. So let's look at these four different targets, A, B, C, and D. And we want to determine um, which set of data, or which set of these little blue shots or circles, are accurate, and precise, which ones are accurate but they're not precise, etc. So again, accurate means you are close to the bullseye. You are right where you want to be. That's the correct answer. And precise means how close together, how consistent is your data or your shots in this case. So which of these are both accurate, they're on target, and they're precise? They're very consistent, they're very close together. Well, of course, it looks like D because you see they're on target and they're all close together. So they're accurate and they're also precise. They're also consistent. So which of these is accurate, but they're not consistent, they're imprecise? Well, that looks like B, because you can see they are all then pretty close onto the target, but they're more spread out. They're not all, all clustered as close together as they were up on D. Now three, which of these targets shows some data that is not accurate, but it is precise. So in other words, it's very consistent, but it's consistently wrong. Well, that looks like C, because you can see the data, it's all clustered and very close together, very consistent, very precise, but it's off target, so it's not accurate. 
And how about neither accurate nor precise, or inaccurate and imprecise? Well, of course, that must be A, because they're all spread out and they're not on the target. Now let's try this with some actual data like you might see in the lab. So here are four different sets of data, A, B, C, and D. And it tells us that the true value is 55.4 kilograms. So first we want to figure out which set of data is both accurate, so it's close to our true value, 55.4, and it's precise. All the measurements are very close to one another. So what do you think, A, B, C, or D? Well, it looks like A because you can see the values are all very close to one another, which means they're precise. And when you average them out, the average is very close, or actually exactly on, the true value. So which of these are accurate, but they're not as consistent, they're imprecise? Well, it looks like C because when you average these out, yes, you get a value, an average here that's very close to the true value, but the data is much more spread out. You see here, they're all, they're all clustered close together, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Here it ranges from 54.7 all the way up to 55.9. Now, How about number three? They're not accurate, but they are precise or they are consistent. Well, that looks like B because the average of these three values, 54.9, is not on target, right? It's not real close to the actual value, but they are very close to one another. They're only off by 0.1 more here, 0.2 more here, et cetera, so they're very close. And then the last one, D, it's not accurate because the average of the three values is off target from the known value, and they're all spread out too. So that's inaccurate, and imprecise. So whenever you make measurements in science, there's always gonna be some degree of error associated with it. You can't make a perfect measurement with no error. So the more precise the measurement is, well, the less error is contained in it. Now, error in a measurement is indicated by the number of what are called significant figures or significant digits. So if a number has more significant digits, that means it's more precise and has less error. So let's talk about significant figures. How do we record those? So when you're making a measurement, you want to record all of the known digits, all the ones that are clearly marked on the device, on the thermometer, on the ruler, on the graduated cylinder, plus one final estimated digit. So you only estimate one more digit beyond whatever is clearly marked. And this indicates the precision of a measurement. Now remember, sig figs only apply to measurements, right? Not to exact numbers. Again, if something has been defined to be true, like one foot equals 12 inches, that is exactly 12. It is infinitely precise, in other words. There is no error on that whatsoever. So let's just look at an example. So here's a ruler, and it's marked in centimeters, we can see. And we want to measure the length of this rod. So what we do is we record whatever numbers are clearly marked on the ruler, and then we're gonna estimate one more digit beyond that. So I can see it's clearly marked, it's four point something. And then I'm gonna estimate one more. So you might say 4.2 centimeters. Or maybe you think, well, I think it's closer to three. So maybe you say 4.3 centimeters. But what you don't do is you estimate more places than just one and say, I think it's 4.217. You can only estimate one more digit beyond whatever is clearly marked on the device. So this ruler is marked in ones, so we can estimate out to tenths. So 4.2, and that tells you then you're within plus or minus 0.1. So it might be 4.1 centimeter, it might be 4.3 centimeter. And those are all fine. If you were to write down 4.3, I were to write down 4.2, someone else were to write down 4.1, those are all within the same realm of precision because they're all within 0.1 of the correct answer. Because again, that last digit is the one you're estimating. Well, how would you make that measurement on this ruler? So this ruler is more precise because it allows us to have more significant digits. Because this one is marked in one, so four, five, six, it's also marked in tenths. So here's 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. So now we can say, okay, I know it's four for sure. And I know it's between 0.2 and 0.3, so 0.2 something for sure. But again, I always have to estimate one more. So maybe I think it's right in the middle, so I'm gonna say 4.25 centimeters. So up here we had 
4.2 centimeters. Here we have 4.25. So you can see this one had two digits. This one has three digits or three significant figures. So more digits indicate that this value is more precise. Because this one we were estimating the hundredths place. In this one on ruler A, we were only estimating out to the tenths place. So this ruler again gives us a more precise measurement and has less error in it because it produces values with more significant digits. Let's try that again on this paperclip. How would you record the length of this paperclip on this ruler? So again, we see it's clearly marked in ones. So I know it's between two and three, so it's two point something but I have to estimate one more place. Again, I can't estimate more or less than one. So two point, let's say three centimeters, or maybe you say 2.4 centimeters. Again, both of those answers are fine because we're both estimating in the tenths place. Now, if you were to have a different place here and you were to say three point something, that'd be totally wrong because it's clearly two something. Now, how about on this ruler? Well, this one is marked in ones and tenths. So again, we can be more precise. So now you might say, well, two for sure. And then we see it's pretty clearly right on the three here. So 2.3, but we can't stop there. We have to go one more. Again, if I were just to write this down as 2.3, that would say the ones are what I knew for sure but I'm estimating the tenths. And that's not true because the tenths are marked, so I have to estimate the hundredths. So if you think it's right on the three, you would say 2.30. Or maybe you think it's slightly below, so you might say 2.29 centimeters. Again, those are both fine because we're both just off here in the hundredths place, which is where that estimated digit is. Okay, let's try a few more examples just to drive this point home. How would you record the volume of the liquid in this beaker? Well, again, you want to record whatever place is clearly marked and estimate one more digit after that. So here we see it's 20 something. We're going to estimate one more. Looks like it's maybe 28, so 28 milliliters. Again, if you say 27 or 29, that's fine because we all agree on the tens place. It's the ones place that we're estimating. Now over here on this graduated cylinder, you see now it's marked in ones, so we know the ones for sure, 28 something. But again, we have to estimate one more place, so that would be tenths place. So you might say 28.2 milliliters. Or maybe you think it's 28.3 milliliters. Again, both are fine because we're estimating in the tenths place now. Now over here on the burette, this is even more precise. We're going to have more significant digits because now the ones are marked, 28, 29, 30, and the tenths are marked. So 28.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, but again, I still have to go one more. So I know for sure it's 28.3. I'm going to estimate one more and say maybe two. So 28.32. Again, if you think it's 28.31, that's fine because we're estimating out here in the same digit. Now notice how these values all got more precise. So this one had two significant digits, so it's the least precise. Then we went out to tenths place, so that gave us three significant digits, that's more precise. And then four significant digits, so that's more precise. Okay, one last example. Let's go ahead and take a minute to practice reading the temperatures on these three thermometers. So go ahead, pause the video, and just take a quick second and write down your three best guesses. And then when you're ready to have your answers checked, go ahead and hit play. Okay, so what do we know for sure? Well, it's marked in tens. Here's 20. Here's 30. It's also marked in ones. So 21, 22, 23. So I know for sure it's 21 point something, but I have to go one more digit. So maybe I think it's 21.2. And we'll assume this is degrees Celsius since it doesn't tell us. Um, but if you said 21.3, again, that's fine as long as we're estimating out in the tenths. 21, that would be completely wrong, right? Because 21 would say tens are what I know for sure and I'm estimating the ones. And that's not true. I know the tens and the ones, so I have to estimate tenths place. How about over here on this thermometer? 
Well, again, tens are marked and ones are marked, so I know it's 22. But again, I can't just write 22. I have to estimate one more. So if it's right on 22, then I have to put 0. 0.0. And one more time, why would 22 be wrong? Because that would say you were estimating the ones place, which is not the case. We are estimating the tenths place because the ones are marked. Okay, how about this last thermometer? How would you do that? Well, it's a little hard to see, but we can tell tens are marked, so I know it's 20 something. Ones are marked 21, 22, and even the tenths. So it's just above 0.1. But again, I can't stop there. I have to go a little farther. So I'm going to say 22.12 degrees Celsius. You might say 22.11 degrees Celsius or 22.13 degrees Celsius. But again, we're all estimating out here in the hundredths place because we all agree that the tens, the ones, and the tenths are all clearly marked and the estimating has to occur in the hundredths place. So which of these values is the most precise? Again, the one that has more significant digits is more precise. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to take scientific measurements using the correct number of significant digits. For even more videos on significant digits, including how to use them in calculations, please come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com.